Hello, 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 hello! Welcome to watching Video Gaming Farm's video review of a puzzle platformer with pinball elements called Yoku's Island Express. Can such a mix of the genres even work? Will you find a catching story in the game? Who's the main hero and what's his mission? Does it have user-friendly controls and interesting level design? Is the environment and enemies variable enough? Are there many interesting ideas to keep your attention long enough? And how about the difficulty? Don't you be frustrated soon? Just keep watching my Yoko's Island Express video review and soon you will know whether it is a suitable game for family playing or if you should just forget about it. So how about the story? Is there any in the game? The answer is positive. Yoko is a small dung beetle who has just arrived on Mokunama Island and he is ready for easy life soaking up the sun and delivering parcels on tropical paradise. Starts nicely, doesn't it? He came to take this job from the poster dactyl, hmm, the authors really have original ideas, who introduces him to the job and gives him the first task to bring the postal badge to Nim the translator. He also does not forget to mention that something big is going down that he doesn't want to be part of. An ancient island deity is trapped in a restless sleep and it's all down to Yoku to help those in need. The story is quite original and you will meet many NPCs on your way that give you various tasks and develop the story further. So it's one of the strong parts of the game. Now let's take a closer look at the gameplay. In its core, Yoku's Island Express is a classic puzzle platformer, or better, Metroidvania, because there are no classic levels but rather areas that the open world consists of, and some of them you will need to visit repeatedly. So you move either horizontally or vertically between the platforms, collecting items and solving the puzzles like in classic puzzle platformers. The main and the big difference from classic puzzle platformers is that you are not jumping to move between the platforms. Wait, what? Platformer without jumping, what kind of nonsense it is? You are probably thinking right now. Is Yoko able to fly then? Even if he could fly, he is still pushing his favorite marble in front of him. Well, let's better not think what it's made from. So the answer is negative. To move between the platforms, mainly vertically, I used... Ta-da! Pinball flippers! Every time you come to the place where you need to get higher, you can find some flippers around. There are various types of them. They are either shooting you up in the left or right direction, push you horizontally or trap doors letting you fall down vertically. There are also bumpers that shoot you in the predefined direction according to the physical laws once you hit them. And your task is to make all these elements to get you to the right spot to continue further. So at one moment you are playing a classic platformer and suddenly you start to play a paintball game. It's pretty original, isn't it? But isn't enough to keep your attention? How about some features enhancing the gameplay? Yes, they are. Actually quite a lot of them. The first one are NPCs giving you various tasks. Sea monster making you to get juicy mushrooms for it to let you cross its pond, Nim the translator asking you to deliver the letters to Tree Chief of Mokumana or Slug Gardener providing you with his tools to be able to use the exploding slugs wow, to make your way further. These tasks are variable enough and mostly entertaining thanks to the presence of a good sense of humor in the game. The other refreshing mechanics can be found in the pinball part of the game. Main goal in classic pinballs is to get the highest score possible. Here you are collecting fruits instead of points by hitting various bumpers. What is it good for? Well, the fruits serve as universal currents in the game and the main usage of them is for unlocking the locked flippers. Yeah, some of the flippers are inactive so you need to pay for their unlocking by specified amount of fruits. You can fight them along the way but it would not be enough so your task when you're playing the pinball part is not only to get further by using pinball elements but also to collect as many fruits as possible. It is actually a good way to motivate you to play pinball. There are also many puzzles that you need to solve. They vary from straightforward ones like to get the ball somewhere, to activate the mechanism, opening the closed door, 
to more complex lines to get the slug vacuum to be able to suck the slugs to subsequently use them to destroy the big rocks staying in your way by their explosion. There are many more original ideas, but I do not want to spoil the moments of surprise to you. Now it's time to check the level design and controls. As I said before, it's rather metroidvania, so you will be gradually uncovering the world map, usually by getting the tasks from NPCs. Like we are here, I need something from the area which is there, and it is up to you to find a way to get there. You've got a map in your inventory, you can open it any time and zoom in or out. I cannot say that it's not useful, but the world is quite big and the map can be confusing, so I was not using it too much. Mainly just to have an idea in which direction is the area I need to get in. I can appreciate that the devs probably did not want to reveal too much, but the detailed map but still it could have been done better, I would say. The good thing about this approach is that the gameplay is not so linear and you have the freedom to choose your own path across multiple quest lines. And also the environment is variable enough. You can find tropical beaches, snowy mountains, green jungles, etc. As for the controls, I found it smooth and responsive enough. You just need the movement keys, two buttons to control the flippers, a special action button which you use for example for blowing the whistle to wake up the creatures that help you to get further, the key to open the inventory and another one for the world map. Simple and also user friendly. Is Yoku's Island Express a difficult game? Well, not really, as it would not even fit to the relaxing atmosphere of the game. There are no enemies in the game and Yoku cannot die, only lose some collected fruits when falling into the thorns that are usually in the hole between the flippers. As you are in the open world, you can always get back to some other areas to collect fruits if you need them for unlocking the flippers. This makes the game rather relaxing than challenging. The difficulty of the puzzles is medium at its best. Some of them I resolved immediately, some took me more time, but there are no puzzles that you would need to spend many hours with to crack them up. The biggest challenge I had was to find a way to the right area to fulfill the quest because of sometimes confusing map and most likely because of my bad sense of orientation as well. How about the game audio visuals? Yoko's Island Express is definitely a nice game to look at. Smooth graphics in high resolution with a white color palette make the game graphics beautiful. It is supported by many interactive objects and effects in the foreground, changing environment and dreamy backgrounds. I really enjoyed it. As for the soundtrack I would not probably listen it outside the game, but relaxing Hawaiian music perfectly fits the relaxed game atmosphere. Sounds are also ok, there are quite many of them, as you are still breaking or activating something in the pinball part of the game, and sound effects of rain or falling water are very relaxing and quite realistic. The only complaint I've got is that the game is not dubbed. The voice would give the characters their own identity and would definitely make the game even more atmospheric than just incomprehensible mumbling. So you need to read through all the dialogues which also shifts the age limit for the kids towards the school. Let's get to the final verdict then. I've enjoyed playing Yoku's Island Express. The answer is positive, at least most of the time. I really like the positive relax, uh, relax atmosphere of the game, sense of humor, many original refreshing ideas, variability of the environment, user-friendly controls, beautiful graphics, relaxing music and sounds. What I do not like so much are confusing game map which causes tiresome wondering sometimes and creeping stereotype that comes sooner or later despite all original ideas in the game due to simple game mechanics. Maybe some RPG elements would make it more motivating yeah. And of course, the local co-op would suit the game as well. Relax atmosphere makes the game suitable for family playing, but as many puzzles are not so trivial and you need to read to know what to do, I would only recommend it for school aged kids. Yoko's Island Express costs 20 euros on Steam, which is quite a lot, so I personally recommend to wait for some discount, and it's discounted quite off. Yoko's Island Express is definitely not a flawless game, but as it has many features making it suitable for playing by fellow gaming fathers and their families, I'm giving it thumbs up and Video Gaming Fathers Index 7 plus out of 10. Recommend it with some discount. Thank you for watching this video review. If you like it, please do not forget to give it thumb up. And if you are not subscribed yet, just click on subscribe button to be informed about my new video reviews. See ya!